Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen, welcome back to Sunday Morning the Old Cookbook Show. This morning we're going to do something from this 1933 cookbook from F.W. McNess. Um, F.W. McNess was a consumer products company. They got their start as a patent medicine company. Uh, and then they moved into food flavorings and they made everything from brushes, adhesive tape, sewing machine oil, worm capsules for swine, different types of extracts, spices, toilet articles, and they, and even into the 1930s, they were still making remedies. And they were sold door to door. They had door to door salesmen or mail order. Um, we're going to make a French chocolate cake. So I'm going to start it with the butter. I'm going to put the butter in the stand mixer and we'll get this going. I mean, today it's still, it's not odd that a consumer product company has their fingers in a whole bunch of different pies, everything from bathroom cleaner to things that you cook with in the kitchen. Today though, it's broken up into um, sub brands that use different names so that you don't sort of clump them all together. In this time period, there were a bunch of companies like this. They had their brand name on everything and they made everything across the board all under the same brand name. They didn't feel the need to kind of hide that the businesses were related or the products were related. And they got their start as a patent medicine company. And so early on, um, you could go to McNess and say, I want to I want to sell your patent medicine. They had uh, four or five wagon designs that they called their mobile uh, pharmacies. And so you would buy, I'm gonna put half the sugar in with the butter. You would buy uh, their mobile pharmacy wagon, hitch up your horses and head off across the West, town to town, selling medicine. Um, any big audio dynamite fans out there? Medicine show, that's what it's all about. So. Then they move into these other products, and by the 1930s, they're, they're sort of curtailed in what they can claim on their medicines, and they're called remedies. This is an advertising booklet. Um, still super hard sell. If you read the testimonials, and they're very careful to tell you that each of the testimonials given in this book are not paid, that the people giving these testimonials have done it because they believe in the product. It's really hard sell. Uh, really, really hard sell. Anyway, the first section is about cakes and how you can be uh, an incredible cake baker if you follow the cake baking secrets of, of Mrs. Edith Moore. Um, she's a champion cake baker, winner of nearly a thousand cake baking prizes. And so we're going to do this French chocolate cake um, that has won 29 first prizes. I've got high hopes for this cake. Mind you, even though um, there are several pages of instructions before this telling you how to be a prize-winning baker, the recipe is a little bit lacking. Um, the recipe is a little bit lacking. So I've got the butter and the sugar going, or half the sugar going. I've got flour in this bowl, and I'm going to mix in baking soda. So we'll just give that a rough mix. I'm using a stand mixer, so I don't need to be too crazy with mixing these together. Even though Mrs. Moore tells me that I should sift it together six or seven times. Uh, I'm happy with honorable mention. I don't need a first prize ribbon. Honorable mention is, is good enough for me. So that's mixed together. Now, it's a French chocolate cake, so I know chocolate is coming. Mind you, in the ingredients, no chocolate is mentioned. Um, then it says dissolve two thirds of a cup chocolate, half cup sugar in a little hot water. Uh, she goes on and on about measuring correctly. In the, in the beginning pages of this, she goes on and on about measuring correctly and how important having the right ingredients are. Um, she doesn't mention what kind of chocolate to use. I'm assuming that since we're dissolving the chocolate in a little bit of water with the sugar, that she's talking about cocoa powder. And she does make mention that she enjoys using cocoa powder better than solid chocolate earlier on in the book. So I think I'm on the right track with the cocoa powder. I think I can crack the first egg into the stand mixer. We'll get that in there. Eggs go in one at a time. Now into the cocoa, I'm going to put the other 
half cup of sugar and we'll give that a bit of a stir and then who knows how much hot water I'm assuming she wants a bit of a paste um, get the next egg in here so in order to get a good paste going I'm gonna have to put in a little bit more water okay so a little bit of water turned out to be a quarter cup and we'll get the last egg in here and this is beat up really nice that uh, really whipping some air into the into the sugar the butter and the egg um, gives you a much better cake batter so that goes in now I'm supposed to use one cup of sour milk so I'll get one cup of buttermilk turn that down a little bit add in some of the buttermilk and some vanilla every fiber in my body tells me I should be alternating milk flour milk flour a little bit of each back and forth um, no she says dissolve two-thirds a cup of chocolate and half a cup of sugar in a little hot water done that add this to the sugar butter milk and eggs which have been well mixed so I'm supposed to put all of the buttermilk in, then the chocolate, and then the flour, which results in a broken mixture, as you can see. So let's just go whole hog, get it all in there. Okay, so that batter is sloppy, it's broken, the chocolate's mixed in, it's time now to put in the flour and soda. So I'll just spoon it in a little bit at a time, and we'll see what happens. Now, the next direction is bake. <laughs> That's it. No pan size. Uh, no oven temperature, nothing like that. I mean, she goes on and on about how you too could compete at the fair for prizes, but she does not want to give away any of her secrets at all. Um, you know, she's got this thing here on the side. You too can now bake prize winning cakes. You don't need elaborate equipment, extensive education, or long years of special training. I do with a little more instruction than just bake. So, um... Oven's at 350 because that's a safe temperature for baking a cake. She does give information early on about baking angel food cakes. And she starts at 275 and then brings it up to 325 for an angel food cake. And I don't know if that information holds true on this cake or not. So I've got a, uh, I've got a nine inch round cake pan buttered with a parchment disc in the bottom and We'll just get the batter in there and see what happens. Could have spread this between two round cake pans for sure. So I'm going to give that about a half hour. I'll come back and check it and see what happens. Tastes like chocolate cake. That's going to do really nicely. <laughs> hey, Glenn. Hey, Jules. Hey, friends. What happened? You like blew your top on the cake. So Is that the middle? I feel like the middle's over here. I know. I know. I know. So this... The, um, what happened? Well, apparently Mrs. Edith Moore, championship cake baker, winner of nearly 1,000 cake baking prizes. Oh my goodness, that's was, a lot of cake baking. Yes, is giving up all of her cake baking secrets in these recipes so that you too can win prizes at the county fair baking her cake recipes. I'm 
won prizes, not winning, making her recipe, but my grandma's recipe at the county fair. So, <laughs> I just saying, I too am a county fair prize winner with my um, cake. This cake apparently has won 29 awards and she's keeping secrets. She says she's given all the secrets, but You're she's saying not. saying this is not... She left out a whole bunch of stuff. And so like I... Like the correct size pan? The correct size pan. It doesn't say that there's any kind of um, to the side here. frosting to go with this. So I had assumed that it's in one pan that is, because there is a style of cake from this time period that doesn't have frosting or icing. So I figured it was that. But it turns out that it should have been a layer cake. There's enough here to do, or maybe a large sheet. It was a pretty deep, I mean, it's a pretty good basic chocolate cake. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's chocolatey. It's moist. It's you know, what a good cake. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could win a prize. <laughs> Maybe I yeah, can pick out a few county fairs for you to enter. The judges were you know blind or blindfolded, looking the other way. Yeah, you kind of <laughs> sort of that part. <laughs> mm. But you know, maybe you only submit one sh one slice. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's how it works. Okay, that's good. Here's my secret. Bake it in two pans. Here's my secret. <laughs> Ice it as a layer cake. Hold on. Is it your secret or is it your hack? Oh, no. Yeah, no, it's a hack. It's uh -huh. 2024. Uh-huh. Let's hack this cake. <laughs> so, it is a really good cake. I mean, it looks it looks funny because it's domed and it's, it's a really good cake. Okay. Um, this is a really weird book. We're gonna come back to this book. Now I'm curious. Well, I'm gonna have to look through it. Well, in between it, now and later. Because it starts out as her cake baking secrets, and then it moves into this, into the middle section where mm -hmm. there are recipes in other languages. Mm -hmm. So there's recipes in there in Chinese, in Swedish, in Norwegian, what? in German, Italian. So all the. <laughs> Does she have the trend? Oh, look at that, Zhong Won. Uh huh. Uh huh. What a very forward-thinking, inclusive recipe book. And then you get to the end of the book, and it's Hollywood stars telling you how they use these McNess items in their day-to-day -day lives. Are they the same recipes, just in a different... Yeah, yeah so they do it in, in... So that there's a page of Danish, or in Chinese, and then there's in English, so that, so that you can make them. Okay. Huh. So we'll be coming back to this book again and again and again, because I think it's a, it's a pretty cool little book. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon. I'm totally sucked into the book, eh? See you.